Oh, hi! Hey, Toasty, how are you doing? it look like? It's a construction zone on the space station. Yeah, but why? Upgrade. Well, what was wrong with the old one? It was old. Hey, speaking of which, uh, being that you're kind of old yourself, I was thinking maybe some upgrades for you be nice. How about an auto oiler or a jacuzzi hot bath recycling plasma? Ah, we'll talk about it later. Hey, welcome to the show, everybody. Today we've got a great guest, Sandy, and her film, My Life in Minutes. But we can talk about this thing though, because that actually sounds pretty sweet. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of into that, so let's talk about that, yeah? Y yeah, sure. Hey, roll the Wi Fi. And if I roll the Wi Fi, we can talk about this, right? Yeah, I'm sure we'll get to it. Okay, but you're going to talk to me. You, you, you know, you're not going to jip me out here, because I, I, you know, th th that sounds really sweet. I'd like that, you know. You know so, okay. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Oh, yeah, we'll talk about this. So. It is my pleasure to welcome to the show Sandy Wilson, award-winning writer and director, well known for her film, My American Cousin. Today we're gonna to talk about the Crazy Eight film in year 2000 called My Life in Eight Minutes. And I have to ask straight off the top, could you add eight more minutes? Actually, I couldn't fit it into eight minutes and so I think I changed the title to My Life in a Few Minutes <laughs> because it wound up going about nine and a half minutes or so. What did it? it yeah, it was over. really hard. It's hard to edit your life. Tell us about the film. What was the experience like? And, and so welcome oh. to have you. So, yeah, Paul Armstrong <laughs> asked me if I wanted to get involved, uh, and Andrew Williamson mm -hmm. asked me if I wanted to do something for the Crazy Eights Film Festival, and it really appealed to me. And um, I've always kind of um, been interested in family, mm -hmm. especially me and my own family. Oh, why is that? <laughs> I think it's maybe because when I was a kid growing up at Paradise Ranch, we were at the end of the dirt road and there was no television or telephone or anything like that, but my dad shot home movies. So I was kind of used to watching uh, home movies. Hmm. So it just seemed like natural to make movies about my family. Uh -huh. And so when Crazy Eights came along, it came shortly after my mom died. Hmm. And I felt like the rug had been completely pulled out from underneath me and uh, it would be a good time to uh, reassess my life and just sort of think, hmm, where have I been and where am I going? Which I had no idea what I, where I was going. Um, so that was kind of the impetus and I wrote a little script weaving around dreams about being a mermaid and, you know, always searching for something and, uh, you know, success and failure, mm -hmm. how they're a little bit the same, you know, different sides of the same coin. Isn't that true? Mm. Yeah, so it was kind of a, an opportunity to do a little therapy via filmmaking. Well, let's watch your film, My Life in Eight Minutes. Toasty, roll that Wi-Fi. Pop it up. Act one, the beginning, the easy part. My father noted in his diary, October the 15th, 1947. Two loads of apples to town, the weather continues good. Catherine had a baby girl. They brought me home to Paradise Ranch. My grandmother moved to Paradise in 1915. It's where my father grew up and it's where we grew up too. I was named Sandra because my mother liked the name and Victoria after her mother who had recently died. I guess you were the one who really was most just yourself, refusing to smile at Granny. Does that child never smile? My children all smiled. My children all had curly hair. My grandmother was a storyteller. She kept two human skulls in her basement. She said there were warriors in our family. My father warned me, Oh, Sandra, I'm afraid you come from a long line of strong women. Things won't be easy for you. I didn't care. I was young and filled with wonder. On my first day of school, there was another girl in grade one named Sandra, and Mrs. Kennedy pointed at me and said, you will be Sandy and she will be Sandra, so there won't be any confusion. But I was confused. I adapted to my new name, Sandy. We played in the lake all summer long. I was a mermaid, at home beneath the surface. I wanted to be friends with Yogo Pogo. 
In my dreams, I would discover heaps of treasure, and then the big fish would come along, and I'd have to make my escape. I could only take the amount of treasure I could carry with me on my person. I still dream my watery dreams, just like when I was a girl. It was a heavenly time. We were blessed, and I was busy. I was going to be a teacher, like my dad. Until I discovered boys and rock and roll. I wanted to be Calamity Jane, Doris Day, the country girl who cleans up beautifully in the big city, riding the range and going to fancy dances in town every night. I wanted to sing and dance and tell stories and live in New York City as a glamorous only child with parents who really loved me and took me out all the time. Instead, I was stranded on the shores of Lake Okanagan with three brothers, two sisters, weird parents, and the first Volkswagen in the valley. I was a cheerleader and the social convener at school. I stopped speaking to my family. With each new boy I fell for, and I fell so hard it hurt, I would try to reflect their personalities. Russ was a guitar player, so I was a groupie. And Mike was a good Catholic boy, so I went to maths and thought about becoming a nun, or maybe an interior decorator. I couldn't wait to leave paradise. For my last year of high school, I was shipped off to a Catholic girls' boarding school. One night, I got dressed up as a nun, and we took this photograph. I was going to send it to Mike, but he got married to Anne, and I was left with a broken heart and this photograph. I was a charter student at Simon Fraser University, living on top of a foggy mountain, going to classes in the clouds, always feeling like the outsider, the girl from paradise. I wondered why Eve got blamed for Adam eating the apple. And why did Mary have to be a virgin anyway? It was a tossed up time of occupations and demonstrations. We were mad at the way the world worked. Some women came up from Berkeley and they talked about equality for women here at home. I was sitting at the back of the room doing my embroidery and it was as if a door opened and we were free to do anything. A friend told me there were some cute guys in a film class, so I signed up. It was intoxicating to make films and fly standby to film festivals and conferences. Money was not important. That was all BC, before children. Act two. It builds on act one. It's a lot more complicated and it's all about characters in crisis and conflict. It'll be longer than act one and act three. I long to settle down and have babies of my own to have and to hold. I fell in love with Phil. He was an artist and we traveled to the Yucatan and Guatemala and moved to Hornby Island where we had our first son, Will. We built a cabin in the Okanagan. One day I heard a song on the radio and it reminded me of my American cousin. I could see the movie, so I started writing the script. Dear Diary, nothing ever happens. I got pregnant the same weekend I started writing, and our second son, Matt, was born in 1983. The next year, we made My American Cousin, and the movie unmade us. When we had a rough cut, Phil and I split up on New Year's Eve. I was forced to reconstruct myself. When tossed about on life's stormy seas, it's always been the women in my life who threw out the lifeline. My aunts, my sisters, my mother, loan officers at Van City Saving, and my gal pals. Sandra, as you get older, you'll see. Boys are like buses. If you miss one, another one will be along before you know it. Without them, I might have drowned but I didn't. I felt the hand of those strong women and ancient warriors. And after a year in dark editing rooms, we leapt into the spotlight. And the winner for best director is... 
Then? Sandy Wilson, my American cousin. The mermaid from paradise was swimming with the big fish and picking up treasures. There's magic in the movies. We can give shape to our memories, to our dreams. We can live forever on the silver screen or on the digital tape. We can reach out from our hearts, tell our own stories, and reach millions of strangers all over the world in dark theaters. I know. I've been to Moscow, where they turn the sound way down. There's one actor at the back of the room, and he translates all the lines. Or Havana, Cuba, where mi primo americano was a hot hit. My American cousin took me around the world and back again. It was exhausting. Not to worry, didn't last long. The sequel was doomed and I felt like a woman about to deliver a stillborn baby. Set adrift and suddenly sandwiched between a father with Alzheimer's and two teenage sons who needed a parent at football games, martial arts tournaments, the principal's office, ICBC Claim Center, and the emergency ward. My father died in 1992. I gave his eulogy. I had to rehearse it so I wouldn't cry. My mother said she was never going to remarry again. No, all that fussing over supper, why bother? She said she was better off on her own, and I agreed with her completely. And then, two years later, she married Jack Riley, and I got to be the social convener and the cheerleader. It was wonderful. The boys are leaving home, slowly. Jack died two years ago, and my mother died a year later on December the 31st, 1999. She came to me in my mermaid dreams, asked me to let her go, and said goodbye the night after she died. Act three. Act three is the toughest one to write. You've got to sum everything up. Everything has to make perfect sense. It's very difficult to write your own third act. Besides, I gave her multiple endings. I don't know what the future holds, but this is how my life looks today. There are a few details missing or glossed over, but uh, we wanted to get all our credits in. Wow. Hey, Toasty. Mm, I hate Tuesdays. Why do you hate Tuesdays? Because Mondays are taken. <laughs> I mean, what are we getting ready for here? Season two? Oh, season two. Jeez, we. We'd have to talk to him. What? No, 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 no. We're not talking to him. That guy is pure management crazy. Just keep him away from me. Or me away from him, but no, 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 no. You want to talk to him? You talk to him because, oh, wow, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> I fully understand. So before we talk about that, let's go to another film. This is an interview with Michael Love in his film, Along for the Ride. Roll that Wi Fi. <laughs> Michael here is a filmmaker, of course, because that's who we have on these shows. And you did a film in 2001 for Crazy Aids. Yes, we did. It was uh, Long for the Ride. Long for the Ride. Tell us about that film. What was it like? It was, well, first it's about a little gangsters, the gangsters go wrong, a little bit of tongue-in-cheek comedy. Mm -hmm. Shot on, with $800, <laughs> and finished from start to beginning, including writing, in eight days. So we shot it in two days, and then posted it. And it was quick and dirty, and that's what the film's all about. It's just quick and dirty. What was it like to do? Was it, was it one of your first films, or...? I think it was like my fifth or sixth short film. Uh, I work in the film industry as a film technician, so I'm surrounded by creative minds and stuff, and they always encourage me to go out and shoot my own stuff. And, and so I just said, hey, do you guys want to do this eight-day project? And they were, they were all like, well, how many days? <laughs> and I was like, eight days from start to finish. And we just 
went, we just had so much fun doing it. Mm -hmm. So we just did it and my cinematographer, Barry Dunleavy, he asked me if uh, we were shooting 35 mil. And I said, no, Bear, we have a budget of $800. And one of the parameters is you get an eight uh, DV cassette that's 60 minutes, and you can only use the one cassette. And he's like, a DV? Is that, that's not 16. That's not high def. <laughs> what is it? And what's DV? And I was like, you know, like the little handy cam things? And he made it look fabulous. Like it's, And it's also a funny little story. It's just like a little microcosm of what could be bigger. Mm -hmm. So it was fun. And the actors were phenomenal like they had they had no idea what they were walking into <laughs> <laughs> everybody had such a good time mm. yeah so it was a lot of fun I totally feel blessed that I was a part of that process that's great let's watch this film yeah let's definitely watch it okay toasty roll that Wi-Fi You seeing this? You f***ing seeing this? This is not a f***ing trunk. This is a lunchbox, huh? Where's the rest of it? What are you talking about? There's lots of room. Just squish it in there. Didn't they have any caddies? Unbelievable. We're gonna have to fold it in half to get in the f***ing thing. Come on, boss. Can't we just get a bigger car, drop the kid off at school? I don't want to hear any more of this We got a job to finish. What the hell are these? Uniforms. Junior told me to get new coveralls for the job. Hey, Junior, you see what the kid got for new uniforms? You believe us? Would have looked like four giant carrots. What a f up. Shut up and get in the car. We'll put these on when we get there. But stop busting my balls, Bobby. All they had was orange, you know? What was I to do? I like it. Oh, correction, we're gonna look like three f***ing carrots and a giant pumpkin. I think it makes me look thinner. What do you guys think? Get in the car, pumpkin. Pumpkin? I'm fangolo, pumpkin. I still can't believe they got us a convertible. Oh, come on, guys, it's the only one they had. Didn't they have any caddies? Now that's a good car, lots of legroom. Come on, it ain't so bad, look at Fresh air, the sun beating down. Yeah, well, maybe you should try sitting back here, huh? I think there's more room in the trunk. Okay, enough about the car. Let's focus on the job. What the f What are you doing? Red light, I gotta stop. What? Well, can't you pace yourself? Who, who found this guy? Shut up, the both of you. Yeah. Hey, it's Mickey. Everything's still a go. So what's that piece of doing right now? Uh... Like, right now? Yeah, like this very second. Uh, I don't know what he's doing this exact second. Mickey, I want to remind you that you're supposed to keep an eye on this guy at all times. I know, but I had to go. Go? Where the f*** did you go? I'm, uh, I'm in the, uh, bathroom. What? I, uh, I had to, uh, take a, a dump. All right, let me get this straight. Because you had to take a crap, you don't know exactly what this guy's doing right now? I know, I know, I'm sorry, but I, I'm nervous. If he ever found out. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he's at the table with the rest of his boys. And <laughs> dessert hasn't even arrived yet. Oh no. I think someone's coming. 
I'll call you if anything changes. Mickey. Tony and his boys still there? Yeah, we're still on his plan. Good. Tony and the rest of them son of a bitches ain't gonna know what hit them. <laughs> the Bambinos are too stupid to figure that one of their own is working with us. <laughs> yeah, well, Tony shouldn't have crossed Mickey like he did. Lucky for us. You know, I've been waiting for this for years to happen. And I gotta admit, I like a guy on the inside. This is gonna be one sweet surprise. <laughs> Surprises are good. <laughs> Who's that? There's nobody. It's just some chick I'm banging. Oh, yeah? Is she hot? What's her name? What, what, what do you care? Well, because I think you're full of <laughs> That's why? Does she have a name or what? Yeah, she's got a name. Her, her name is Betty. Betty? <laughs> <laughs> What are you f***ing, one of the Flintstones? <laughs> a manja cake? <laughs> hey, Italian women, they got it all, Danny. Passion, attitude, fire, <laughs> and uh, Great names like uh, Angelina, Rosalina, <laughs> yeah, Gabriella. Mm, can't beat that. <laughs> and, and they can cook, too. <laughs> what the hell? Well, there's another red light. What was Hey. You could have made that. Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll make the next one, all right? Where'd we get this kid? It came highly recommended from Vinny. Ooh, Vinny. Vinny's doing 10 to 20. Yeah, I had to drop off a package from his mother last month. He knew we were looking for a new driver. He gave me this kid. He's a little green, but he's okay. Well, what are you, you whipped? Oh, let me guess, she wants you to pick up some brontosaurus burgers. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you go f yourself, huh? Whoa! Whoa. Oh, yeah. Whoa. Hey, 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 knock it off. Come on, I got a sandwich. Here. Yeah, hello. Hello? You're breaking up. Hey. Where are we going? Hey, kid, this is the wrong way. I know of a shortcut. Hello? Speak louder. Who is it, boss? This ain't no shortcut. My ass! What? I can't hear you. Boss, is everything OK? I know what I'm doing. No more red lights. Shortcut, my Stop the car. You're going to be late. Should have just stuck to the plan. Stop the car. Where the hell are we? I just saw a short- You're not being paid to think! Oh, sh this ain't good. We're being set up. Hold on, let me take care of this. Danny, stay in the car. Ah, uh, must be some kind of misunderstanding here, guys, huh? You're right, Junior. This is one sweet surprise. My uncle, Tony Babino, by the way, sends his regards.
is so awesome. There's a button for the laboratory door. There's a button for the peanut butter. There's a button for all my cameras. There's a button for the final cut. There's a button for everything. And how, how did you know, Richard, that I absolutely needed a button for unlimited rice pudding? This is so awesome. You like the new console? I love it. I love it so much. <laughs> I thought you'd like that. Hey, just a bit of advice. Don't press that button, okay? That button? Yes, that one. The one labeled Premiere? Yes, that button labeled Premiere. Why did I buy Oh, no, no! no!